I'm a litigation partner at Mintz Levin. Uh, my practice primarily focuses on representing uh, directors, officers, and owners of closely held businesses. So typically we advise advising those directors, officers, and owners about um, strategies for their business in managing corporate governance, but also uh, when matters arise, uh, handling litigation for them. Like what kind of cases? Uh... Well, typically if we're advising um, uh, owner, a uh, majority owner of a business, we could be advising them about uh, a tr an interested transaction where they're going to lend themselves money or hire someone as a consultant who they have a relationship with or deal with issues uh, arising from minority owners. Now on the flip side, when we represent a uh, minority owner of a business, often issues that we're dealing with are the uh, liquidity of their, their interest in the business. Because you could have a hundred million dollar business of which you own 20% of, and you can have on your books, well this is $20 million, but in your bank account, you don't have anything to show for it. So often there's a question about how to monetize that investment right. uh, where there's no real market for your shares. We're a full service law firm with, with about 500 attorneys spread across the country, mostly on the East Coast and West Coast. And so we have hundreds of corporate partners who deal with companies from inception all the way through uh, IPOs um, in significant financings. And so we often represent companies from the very start when they're grappling with issues of formation and much later on when they're dealing with more significant issues uh, that come for much larger enterprises. And the piece where I come into play in is when those companies have issues surrounding litigation or adversity, usually internally, uh, but often also we're called from clients who we haven't represented at that early stage and it's only later on uh, after they're uh, successful and can afford uh, the types of legal services that we provide uh, that they call on us to help advise them through sticky situations. What are some of the key issues that you see with closely held corporations, especially at the beginning and as you continue your aspect of it? Well, the pro for the pro all of the problems I see, for the most part, they could have been addressed early on in the company, uh, but it, they're, they're not thought of until later. So for instance, um, I've represented companies where you have two co-equal owners of a company who founded the company, they had a great idea, they poured a lot of their sweat equity into the business and it became very successful. And then 10 years later, after they've relished that success for some time, one partner or the other partner decides they want to take a step back from the business and all of a sudden there's an issue because these two people invested so much and were paid equally and right. enjoyed equal benefits, well, one now is doing a disproportionate amount of the work and the other is not. And the question is, how do you handle that? And sometimes that tension can uh, become exacerbated over time and by the time it's presented to us, they're ready for a, a divorce. And then who gets the business? What does the person who's leaving the business get for it? Those are all issues that arise and, it, and sometimes we see where the business, one business partner who wants to leave it wants to start their own business because they think they can do it better. Uh, and how to resolve those situations can become very sticky. And so we often counsel clients through those and unfortunately sometimes have to litigate those issues.